It is not the first time I've heard this. I've heard this many times from various other peoples and so on. So you're the first one to ask me, and oh, I've never heard this before. So I asked you very, the very beginning, define pedophilia. Before you answer, when someone asks you to define a particular term, you should understand that. You are not that You should understand that. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't be rude and interrupt. You are not addressing the poor You are not that child. 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 You are no he's not 60 years. I'm a six-year-old girl. No, 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 no. So a, if you have a six-year-old six mental years. capacity to speak, then, then behave that way. For your profit to marry. If you can't produce okay. that, then you've lost the debate. There is relax. no conversation with relax. you. Relax, relax. No, I'm not playing your games, my son. No, relax. I'm not playing your games. So whenever so I ask... Produce to me historical Why are you talking over me? I'm just simply trying to ask you a question. Produce to me historical evidence of the seventh century Bedouins marrying six-year-old girls. The question that you are asking is irrelevant question. I'm talking to you. You I'm know, talking to him. You know, you know, you Excuse are not a, a so small child. When someone who don't know asks, the meaning of a can you not pedophile. See how it works? The meaning yes. of pedophile. Yeah. So, so, so you so know the I'm, meaning I'm of pedophile. To him. I'm talking to so him. he is not talking to you. Right. Um, he's when not someone talking. asks, he's not you. talking to you. I'm talking. He is not talking to I'm you. Talking. When someone oh, asks for a definition, there's nothing to talk about. Listen. Until you yeah. answer my first question. Excuse ah, me. Excuse me. I don't want to talk. Listen don't first. Don't answer my first question. Listen. I'm not listening to you. Bro. I asked you for a definition, and you said, having six-year-old girl. Do you know historically? Yes. Historically. Yes. Around the time of seventh century. Let's just compose it there. Yes. Yeah. Around the seventh time, seventh century. Yeah. Yeah. Six-year-olds who are mentally capable of being married. To 52, I am not going to insult you and say you are thick because you are not even understanding my so question. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to insult you by saying you lost the debate. My boy, my boy, I'm not. You are running away from me. Basically, you are running away from me. You are running away from me. You are running away from me. I am simply saying. You are running away from me. If somebody says, you know what, you know what. You are blah blah blah. He said, "What does it mean, blah blah blah?" I need to know what it means. You are running away from me. I have to define the term. You lost it. You are a fifty-three-year-old falsely married a six-year-old girl, and you lost it. Your emotions. Your emotional yeah, outburst no, 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 and your heckling no, no, no. is not more so than you are you are purposely ignoring the question. Show me the question. Who was able to conform to marriage to a 53 year old man? So show me that. Relax. If you cannot, then you if you're, you're, if you're If yeah. you're not a man yeah. enough to listen yeah. to the yeah. answer, yeah. then go oh, and be a man and come back. Then you're okay. finished, boy. Right. You're so finished, boy. There's nothing yeah. else to say. Okay. Do you, do, you, do you have... Oh, 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 right. Okay. You won. You won. No, no, it's okay. No, 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 no. Everybody, you won. Basically, he's saying... Your basically, married a basically, girl. that's right. He was not cognitively able to be married. Yeah. You can't even prove that she was. Brother, you can't even prove that she was an adult. What adult was six years old? Emotional discussion. What adult is six years old? You cannot show that. You are a prophet. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Of course, of course. Your prophet is still a stinking flaming predator. He's a pedophile. He's your Christian brother. He's a big pedophile. I'm not a Muhammad. So as you realize, I'm not pedophile. Brothers, brothers, yeah, I'm not Muhammad. I'm not pedophile. As we now learn and realize, we have sense. When the we discussion is common about sense dictates we that have six year olds yeah. cannot marry grown men. You don't have common, common sense. sense dictates that you know, because they have they don't have the logic but you don't have it they don't have the mental capacity to want to marry but you don't have it free you don't have common sense but you don't have common sense so you're finished but you don't have common sense finish you are you're done you are but an individual the one who you are at home he doesn't have common sense your son your prophet is still a peter he doesn't have common sense if when you are no longer emotional shaking your person then he would have no discussion ready good he's afraid of so now what we're saying is this. Oh, he is not not brother, he it will help. Afraid. It will help when our brothers are quiet, so we can give him a, a good lesson. What lesson? What lesson? Right? 
Eat your profit first. So, as we are talking about definitions, you cannot just pull out definition from one hand. What have you done? What terms, you done for us? terms are defined from the appropriate terms source. Point, blah, for example, blah, blah, blah. what six one you know that prophet, want to have sex with have someone you who, you Bedouin, bro. who is a pedophile? What the definition six, your brain cannot please, please, and should not use your, your brain from what this crazy you know. Tell your prophet. Tell your prophet, wrong man. Name one. You can't. Um, <laughs> I was trying to yeah, educate yeah. you on something. Your prophet, but your prophet is the one who had a lust. Who had a lust. It will help us to discuss. I'm only one talking, and we are patient. And we are patient. So the prophet had a lust. This is a. This is an example of how to remain patient. If you fail. And then he you can go and me included. Right? Yeah. This is a test of patience. Yeah. Right. And they know it. So yeah. they are ashamed of me. This is an exercise for my brother here. Yes. Of how discussions happen in Speaker's Corner. Right. So, so, so what I was saying is this. Definitions of medical term must come from medical sources. So, psychology or psychologist must define what a pedophilia is. Mansour, what six year old you know that's what you need to find? Okay. So, what to have sex Let me tell you what a Christian is. Can I answer? Are you going to answer what I'm saying? Can I answer? Are you going to answer what I'm saying? No, can I answer your question? Are you going to answer what I'm saying? Can I answer your question that you specifically asked? Right. So, hear me carefully. This is a learning for you. Your question, the question that you ask is this. A Christian is a crazy individual. That's what I learned. That wasn't That's my a question at all. That wasn't oh. a question at all. Excellent. Right now. Excellent. <laughs> Notice what he's doing right now. So the excellent. Question I asked is, would, would it be okay? Come on, or is a six-year-old mentally capable of a 53-year-old man to have a That was the question I asked. I you have not answered it, so because you can't. Christian Thank means you. the father of Christ. One second. Do this Thank, you. Of Thank Christ. you very much Do for beautiful. establishing that I was not answering your question. Oh, because you, because you asked a specific question, and I answered... You can't answer my question. Look, I'm praising you, don't you get it? You can't answer my question. So let me state what I'm going to have to say now. Hey, hey, listen. I was just praising you by saying I didn't that you asked I wanted to answer to my question. Then I am answering, so hear me out. Please answer so it. So first, like first, he's, he's first, please. He's purposely he's ignoring us. As, as you, ignoring why are we having a conversation? As you, purposely ignoring us. Brothers, brothers. Just like, uh, you just like all Muslims, they ignore to answer the right way. So how do you stop the attack? They use taqiyya all the time. Exactly. They use taqiyya all the time. So as I, as I, as I, as I, as I said, so, I know you can't. So I wasn't you are, you are answering your question answer. directly. You, you are refusing to answer. So I have not answered your Come question on. directly. So you understand you that, right? To Precisely Once my again, point. Was, right, and I'm going to explain. Once Precisely again, right. my point. What? When I ask you for a definition of pedophilia, able, able, I expect a, a you to give me a definition. Man, do you agree now? My question. Do you agree now? Brother, come and see me. Brother, let me see. 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 Let me you shake more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as you, as we all learned just now, when I asked you likewise for a definition, let me shake. Come and do it here. No, here. No, 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 debate. Do it, Lemon. Stop with your noise. Come and do it. Let's go and debate. I'll expose your pedophile prophet. Right here. Let's do it, bro. Are you all listening? Just give me about a few minutes, then you can take over. I'm standing right here. You want to be right here? Come so here. as you've gone over there to fucking Bellevue or wherever, I'm standing right here. I'm not as you have oh, demonstrated oh, why... Who am I shook of? Relax. What, you lot? Relax, relax. Relax! You lot, me 
<laughs> you lot hit Jack's minions. Come Why don't we scare you lot? <laughs> then don't shake then, relax. Stay calm. Cool. You know what, man? So, hey, don't move around. No, no, I took you know what's going on. No, no, So, the reason Your why. Is still a pedophile. Listen. The reason I why you got an to one second. I'm talking, listen to this. So all this reason, don't shake boy. The reason no why I had this, you know this as well. Tried to kill Do you have a verbal diarrhea? So he was mentally ill. Yeah, he does. So does I he have verbal diarrhea? To say. He can't stop talking. He was a pedophile who had sex with an um, old girl so, and he married a six-year-old girl. Not Nobody in the same the mind answer, marries a six-year-old girl, especially when So it where's it my brother gone? Oh, oh, brother. So the argument's gone. As, as oh, we we if you want to debate me, we can do it. I don't mind. Okay, never mind. So this was an ex. Don't worry about me. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to my friend here. So, brothers and sisters worldwide who are watching, I specifically and purposefully came to waste some time of mine to give a lesson to my friend and my brother here who has at least had a first hand experience of what heckling is, how hecklers behave and talk. They may be believing Christians, right? But how they have minimized themselves to hecklers to prove their religion to be true. This is one thing we learned. The second thing we learned, as we discuss, he's going to heckle. As we're discussing and making a summary of it, he's going to continue to heckle, as you realize. So, second point we learned is this. So ignore the heckler. Ignore the heckler. We've learned this lesson already. Hecklers will heckle continuously as you speak. So, the second point is this. When I ask someone a specific question, is not truthful. And the question was, you should be truthful. when you, you come here in, and insult, you are living me, in Christian. Behave. You are living in Christian. When we, if Muhammad was not truthful, at least you, can you learn like to be child. truthful. They all watching. You are living. Can you like you a are living. Uh, be like you are living among Christian. At least you uh, have learned how to speak uh, truth. I am not uh -huh. interested in talking uh, to you. So, so get lost. So Thank learn, you. learn how uh, to speak truth. Sir, I don't think. It's I just said. Don't I am not don't interested that, in speaking to you. Don't Get lost. use Takiya. I said that rudely. And he's still Takiya, talking. Takiya is good for Muslims. Remember, you cannot be any rude than that. Takiya I just said, Get lost. I'm not interested in to talking you. to you. And he's but, still talking. But you that really be, shows the desperation of certain individuals. Lesson number three. Sometimes you should be truthful. Hecklers are often desperate for attention. For what? what? Do you think this kind of heckling will make people more interested in his religion? Of course not. So the lesson number two that I was saying, this particular individual that's gone over there, not so bright, very emotional, he was saying our Prophet was a pedophile. Very, you know, blunt, brave statement to make. Because it's an insult to us. And he's using this because he has freedom of speech. He knows his freedom is protected here. So he doesn't care if he insults your prophet, your mother and father. He's fine because this land and country is protecting him. So it is our right then to question him in the way he's asked. What do you mean by pedophilia? So we asked him simply, I asked him, define pedophilia. Let's work with the definition first. What do you mean? Do you mean the prophet ate too much sweets? Sweets maybe, chocolates. Is that what you mean by pedophilia? He liked a lot of chocolates. Because we need to get our definitions right, our terms right. So what does he mean by pedophilia? And he gave his own definition. That's the error number one. When somebody asks you to define something, you don't define from thin air. Okay. What is democracy? Oh, democracy is about saying, Alleluia! That's not the definition of democracy. Well, it might be your right to speak freely and whatever, but that's not how democracy is defined. So we need to know where the definition can come from. Definition of terms must come from appropriate sources. A political term must come from a political source, maybe a dictionary specific to political terminology. So I'm not going to go to a medical textbook to find out the definition of democracy. Even though I'm trying my best to find it in a particular source. Definitions of pedophilia must come from likewise appropriate source. Usually, 
medical source, because a medical term, pedophilia is a medical term, so our experts in medicines and psychology, psychological association or psychiatric association, all these professional bodies, they will define what it is. If I say the definition of terrorism is someone who says, I've got my stick, is that terrorism? Is that the definition? Of course not. It has to be an agreeable source and agreed by people what this definition is. In the definitions of in the definition of pedophilia in the medical sources is not what he said. It's someone who has a philia to minors, to peeps. Someone who only has attraction, the love, the philia to underage children who has not reached the age of puberty. Okay, if that is the definition, let's examine our Prophet ﷺ and his character and his life. When did he get married and who did he get married to? First thing in history, he was about 25 years old and he got married to someone 15 years older than him. And this marriage lasted until she passed away. Someone older than him, he was 25, 15 years older than him. Is this a pedophile behavior? Of course not. And he married all his life, he didn't mind anyone else. After he passed away, you will see many other women who are widows, whose husband had been divorced or passed away, they came and he married them. Out of his mercy, out of his compassion, to create social bonds between families and tribes? Is this pedophilia? But that's what they're trying to say. Prophet Islam married a widow. That's the definition of pedophilia. Has to be. That has to be the prime Christian definition of pedophilia. That a person who marries a widow older than him is a pedophile. That is a Christian version of pedophilia. That is a Christian definition. That's what we see, that's what we witness. As we now realize, these critics and people who come with objections on the life and actions of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam obviously have no leg to stand upon. They are nothing but emotional individuals making emotional claims because just because he married someone who was young. We are not realizing that according to the, his own beliefs, even in the Jewish tradition, marriage is to take place very early. 14 may be the cutoff. 15, you're too old. That was the custom. So number, lesson number three, according to what he's done. He is guilty of the fallacy called fallacy of presentism. He's using the present understanding of morality, of ethics, that when we should get married. In this country, you cannot get married until you are what, 18? Age of consent or whatever. So some other countries where they're marrying 14, they're pedophiles. So the King of England, Henry the Eighth. When he married someone very young, he was a pedophile king. When all the English men who married young, in fact, all of them, that's the English culture back then, they're all pedophiles. Every other nation who don't consider the marriage, age of marriage and age of consent to be 18, like in, in some other countries, in Brazil and others, marriage is you know, consent is 12 and 13 and 14 and so on, they're all pedophile. Everyone else. All Christians, the church fathers and so on, those married young, the rabbis, the priests, they're all pedophiles. So this is why we need to break it down, not by immediately defending, oh, the Prophet ﷺ married someone who is older than that, and you start saying, no, the hadith, I reject this hadith. I reject this hadith which says she was six and marriage was consummated when she was nine. Why? You have fallen into the trap of presentism. In fact, the whole world at that time, their understanding of how and when sh one should get married isn't like today. If people married when people at the age of 18 back in the old days, we won't even be here. Because back then, the world, the, in the way they were is, they didn't have medicine, vaccinations, and so on and so forth. People died very young. They matured very young. 
So they had to get married very young, have children very young, and so on and so forth. They didn't have the same kind of lifespan like life today. People don't realize this. So this is the understanding or the misunderstanding people have about the past. If you don't know the history and you talk about the history in a way, that really shows that, you know what, all your assessment of our Prophet Islam is going to be very much biased and pretty much wrong, as we have demonstrated this one example. So in summary then, as this was an exercise for you, my brother, okay? You see people coming up with certain prejudice and bias. It's often the internal hatred. These two individuals, may God guide them. We ask goodness in their hearts to come open so that they can come and they can then worship God truly in, his, in, in the way God should be worshipped and save themselves from the hellfire. No Muslim wants anyone to go to hellfire. We would not even wish our enemy to go to hellfire. We would not want our enemy to go to hellfire. Hellfire is not a good place to be, eternal suffering. And so we would want people to be saved from hellfire by rectifying their thoughts and their ideas. So they had some emotional baggage, hatred, unfortunately. So many of the things you will see in Speaker's Corner is coming from hatred of Islam and hatred of our Prophet Because they realize their belief is not defendable. As Muslims are coming in Speaker's Corner and arguing against the Christians, because they're two Christians, I'm gonna contextualize in Christian Muslim discussion. They cannot defend their belief in Trinity in the deity or, or godhood or godship of Christ, it fails all the time, either scripturally from the scripture from their book or philosophically or logically or rationally. They cannot defend it. And you only need to go and watch these various Muslim and non-Muslim dawah channels, whether it is Sam dawah, EF dawah, SC dawah and so on and so forth. It's all there. Hundreds and hundreds of video discussions that we've had demonstrating the weak foundation of the Christian faith, we are not being um, showing our hatred against Christianity. We are simply saying, you are wrong. You are wrong. You need to come to the true con concept of God and worship God so you can be safe too. Because of this demonstration of Christian dogma and doctrine and belief being demolished and debunked and refuted, Every single Sunday in Speaker's Corner, they have this hatred against Muslims. That's why many of them only come and say, your prophet this, your prophet that, your prophet this, and so on. Yeah. So when you see people are discussing this, somehow we need to now at least make them understand that, you know, you need to come away from this and leave this emotional baggage, at least discuss this on a more civilized, human level, so we can have a discussion. I try. Yes. And I failed. Why? Because they're not interested. Their emotional hatred is so much that it has clouded their judgment. So one thing that you will see again and again in Speaker's Corner, some people have clouded their judgment, their whole intellectual capacity, and reduced it to craziness and to, uh, to a level like even childish. Yes. This particular elderly gentleman, he's so much older than me, but look at the way he behaved. A heckler and he thinks by heckling he's gonna win my heart and I'm gonna say hallelujah I now accept Christ really really so alhamdulillah praise be to Allah that we are here to open people's heart and mind our da'wah our call to Islam is one of an intellectual call to you a philosophical call to you a reasonable call to you, a logical call to you, a rational call to you, and then we will tell you this is what our scripture, our Quran demands of us. And we will give you proof intellectually and textually. And that's how you will see how Islam no longer, no longer is spreading so fast. People are attracted to it. In this country, just a few years ago, three quarters of the people, like three and four people who became Muslim was a woman. Why would an educated woman become a Muslim knowing that Prophet Islam supposedly was a beautiful? Does it make sense? And they're educated. Three quarters, 
of the people here in this country, they were women. Why? Because when they study the Prophet ﷺ, study the character, study even the biography of Aisha radiallahu anha, the bride of Prophet ﷺ, how she talked about Prophet after the Prophet passed away. If you are a pedophile, do you think that your victim praises you all your life after he passes away when you're free? Do you really think? The victims that come out, they will tell you he was a monster. He did this and did that. And look at Aisha radiallahu anha. The praise of the Prophet. And says the Prophet his character was the character of the Quran. He was like the walking, talking Quran. This is Aisha radiallahu anha saying that. So we can demonstrate to people who uses their mind, the intellect, the reason, the heart, that when you really leave your biases aside, you will see how Islam is in tune, finally, with your heart, with your mind, with your soul. So what is stopping you from accepting Islam? That's our call to you. We are not going to tell you become a Muslim, otherwise you know, we're going to call you like, oh, like some people are saying, you know what? Like earlier on, they lost the discussion saying, you're going to go to hell. Well, we know who can go to hell if you worship other than God. And if you set up partners to God, God has mentioned himself that he will not make you into paradise and your destination be hellfire. So this is a warning for all the people. If you really want to save yourself from hellfire, then you have to use your mind, your heart, assess, verify and follow and apply and practice that faith that you have in worshiping God alone, then you will have the confidence and the guarantee and the hope as well that yes, you will go to paradise. But if you don't and you think God will be merciful to you, God is just, isn't he? Would a just God send you to heaven when you are an arrogant rebel or stubborn, someone who insulted God, someone who that did injustice on this earth? and you worship someone else, and you accept him to reward you with paradise? Where is your sense of justice, people? God is just, be just. And if you are just to yourself, you will realize the only way to worship God is to know how prophets have taught us to worship God. And you have no other way but to follow the final prophet and messenger of God, to know that way. And this is no other than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger. Why are you spending all your time reading Harry Potter, watching Netflix? Look at the time you spend on TV, in social media, and yet you have no time to work out your purpose in life, how to worship God, how to fulfill your obligation on this life. And you think, you know what, I'm going to leave it when I'm old. Really? You might die the next minute. There's no guarantee. I might die the next minute talking to like, like normal and then suddenly I'm dead. There is no guarantee. So why are you leaving this important purpose on your life? Come on, boys. Come on, girls. Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on, intelligent people. Your shoes have a purpose. Your glasses have a purpose. Your shirt have a purpose. You, your heart, your lung, your kidneys, your ears, your eyes, they all have a purpose and function. And yet, you don't know what your purpose is. You don't know what your function is in this life. To be happy? To smoke a cigar? That's not the purpose that God created you for. Imagine somebody says, the purpose of my eye is to hear. You can set that purpose. It's never going to hear. You did not put that purpose of your eyes to hear. To acquire vision is something that your parents didn't do either. Did they work out a blueprint? Ah, the genes that control vision is... They haven't got a clue, most of them, if they're not geneticists. They didn't even know which gene controls our vision, which part of our brain controls our hearing. And you say, our parents designed all of that? Of course not. 
So if you have specific parts of your body design for a specific purpose, for a specific function, put yourself together. What is the set designed function of your whole self? Not set by you or your parents. What is it? The only way you can know is by finding out from your creator, the one who created you. That's what the Quran tells us and teaches us. Allah has not created jinn and man. Jinn is another form of creation. And human beings accept to worship you. And the essence of worship is being grateful and gratitude. Now, if I help you, you would say thank you to me, right? Wouldn't you? God did not only create me, give me life and give me all the means to be in, happy in this life. Give me air and the food and the water and so many other enjoyment. Should I not be thankful? Of course. So my natural response is one of being grateful to God, showing gratitude. And this essence is what encompasses the worship, that I am grateful to God. Yes, God, you are my creator. I will listen to what you have to say, the reason you have created me, and I will do what you asked me to do in this life. Right? Some people say, my life is to be happy. Is that what God created you to be happy? Some people are quite miserable. They're not happy. Does that mean they have no purpose in life? Some people say my life is to help people. What if some people can't help others? They have no purpose in life anymore. So we ask people of reason. We ask people of intellect. We ask people of rationality. All people, your heart knows that there is someone controlling this universe, someone governing this universe. Your heart and your mind knows that this someone is powerful than anyone else, knowledgeable than anything else, anyone else. He must have created us for a purpose. Why don't you take that step? Baby step, fine. Pick up the Quran and see what it says for you about your purpose and how to fulfill this purpose. Simple. If you can't speak English, you are watching subtitle in your language, pick up a Quran in your own language, a translation. Read and reflect and engage with it because surprise, surprise, the Quran doesn't say, Ya al Mu'minun, Ya al Muslimun. The Quran often says, Ya al Nas, all people, all people. All addresses all people of the book, Jews and Christians. It's engaging with you. You may be a Christian, you may be a Jew. It engages with you. Not only this, Quran engages with you even if you're an atheist. It says, Awalam yawra alladheena kafaru anna as-samawati wal-ard anna as-samawati wal-ard kanata ratqan fafataqunahum فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Have the unbelievers not known? Have the unbelievers not known? Or seen? That the heavens and the earth was one piece. United, one piece, and God parted it asunder, and he brought every living thing from water. Would they then not believe? Who is God addressing in the Quran? Do not the unbelievers, the kafir, the kuffar, do not the people who have no belief. See, he addressing you, those who call themselves an atheist. And it tells you at the end, would you then not believe? Meaning what? It addresses a concern and it gives you something to reflect on in the middle. And what we see is it actually gives you evidence from astrophysics and biology. Subhanallah. In one ayah, Allah, the creator of this cosmos, gives evidence to the atheists 
evidence from astrophysics and biology in one verse and then ask them rhetorically, would you then still not believe? So yes, as I was saying, the Quran, which you need to pick up and read and reflect, addresses various kinds of people, all kinds, Muslims, non-Muslims, everyone. So what we need to do, my friends and brothers and sisters, if you're not a Muslim, my brothers and sisters in humanity, because we all come from Adam and Eve. So how can you and I be racist? The same blood, excuse me, please. The same blood runs through my veins and your veins. How can we be racist? There is no such thing that we need a black lives matter, white lives matter, Arab lives matter, Chinese lives matter. No, all lives matter. Islam from the very beginning, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no superiority between an Arab and a non-Arab. A Arab, an Arab is no superior than a non-Arab. And no non-Arab is superior than an Arab. A black person is no superior to a white person. And a white person is no superior to a black person. The only difference between us is who's more God conscious, more pious, more righteous. So from the very beginning of the mission of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uprooted racism. So my brothers and sisters in humanity, being the, excuse me, being the same offspring, children of Adam and Eve, we ask you as brothers and sisters of humanity to come back to the worship of our Creator so that we can be saved from the hellfire and we can enter paradise where is the eternal bliss, happiness, joy, and tranquility. Your heart will never be at ease. Your heart will never be tranquil until you have Allah or God in your belief. You will be running around. You will be searching and looking. You will be in despair until you seek and you find Allah in your hearts as the belief. So I leave you with this thoughts. Please, please, please leave the emotions aside. As we have demonstrated earlier, it doesn't help anyone. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help us. It's not going to help the world. Be just. Be a just witness to the world. Be fair and be sincere and be truthful. And once you do this, engage in a meaningful inquiry, truth seeking. Not to say, let me find holes in the whatever, in the Quran, in the Islam, in the Prophet's life. No, find out what the Quran has to say about life, about death, about hell, about paradise, about Allah, about the day of judgment, about justice, about mercy, about compassion. Because when you read the Quran, you will be forced to agree with the principles. When the Quran says, for what reason were these daughters buried alive just because they were daughters? To the very beginning Arabs in the beginning of Islam. For what crime were they buried just because they are daughters? The Arabs used to bury their daughters alive because of a liability. They thought that we have to raise them up and marry them off later on. What a waste of financial resources how the mentality was but the quran says no human beings we are created man and woman man and woman for specific purpose of worshiping god not man only and women and we have all our duties and responsibilities and roles to help each other help each other so that we can create in this life justice we can maintain in this life justice. We can maintain the balance. Look what happened a few weeks ago in Gaza. Because of you, the social media outlets, cameras and so on, the world saw the atrocities and the injustice that we saw that was happening. So we are asking again, 
just as you realize injustices are happening and you have your sense of justice in your heart, awaken it. Awaken your sense of justice and implement justice on the world so that no one suffers, no one is discriminated, but people live in harmony, in tolerance, and so on and so forth. And this is what Islam preaches, encourages people to know and understand. It doesn't matter if we don't want to believe, the consequences hereafter is on you. That's what Islam is saying. To you, your religion, to us, to be mine. At the end of the day, if we have conveyed the message to you and still you want to leave, believe in your religion, that's your religion, that's your prerogative, that's your choice. But we can only warn you of the consequences that awaits in the hereafter. If you don't believe correctly, if you don't practice correctly, and if you die in this state of belief. So the final thought is, my brothers and sisters and friends, take some time out and consider that this epistemological question about who you are, where you come from, what you're doing here, and where you will go after death is more important than your job, than your work, than your study, than your wife, your partner, your husband, your money, your wealth, your fame, your status, more important than all of that. Because if you die not fulfilling the reason why you're created, none of this, your friends, your colleague, your industry, your organization, your wealth, your fame, none of this will help you in the day of judgment. When death approaches, it is not going to even ask you, shall I give you five more minutes or one more year? Everyone's death is fixed. You cannot delay it even for a second. So before death approaches, take this opportunity and answer this epistemological question about your life and then find the answer which we say is Islam. May Allah guide us closer and closer to the truth. Amen.